Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Right, Pastor G, it's all you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. It's good to be back again. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I missed the church at the weekend, you know, and um, I'm glad to be back home. You know, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're back. We're glad to be back on the Monday Bible studies. We give God all the glory and all the praises, all adoration. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. God is good. We've been for the fall for some few weeks now. We've been looking at the gift of the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And we have just finished the revelation gift. Hallelujah. And then um, this week we will be starting with the power gifts. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll be starting with the power gifts. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And um, thank you everyone for tuning in this evening. Wherever you're tuning in from, whether you're, we're, you're tuning in from Canada, you know, whether you're tuning in from um, Australia, South Africa, Kenya, you know, all around the world, amen. We're prophesying that, amen. <laughs> God bless you for tuning in from Banbury, from Bedford, from everywhere, you know. You're welcome this Excellent. evening. Say, say that again. Start Shipton. for Shipton. Shipston on Star Wars. Yeah, that's it. Shifting from shifting as well. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you for tuning in this evening. Hallelujah. Today I won't be able to see many of your faces all at once like I normally do on my laptop because I don't know what's up with my, my laptop. It's just gone blank. So I'm just going to use my mobile phone this evening. I'll flip around to see people's faces if I need to see people's faces. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't go on. Um, don't don't turn your camera off because I want to see the people's faces this evening. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, yes, we'll be looking at the the power gifts this evening. Amen. And um, the power gift, um, we'll be looking at um, the gift of faith. The walking of miracles and gifts of healings amen hallelujah i say that again the power gift we'll be looking at today they are the gift of faith the walking of miracles amen and the gifts of healing praise the lord jesus christ of nazareth and our Bible text, Bible text will be Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8. Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8. Romans chapter 12 and verses 3. Galatians chapter 5. Verses 22 to 23. And finally, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 9. I say that again. Bible text, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8. Romans chapter 12, verses 3. Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 23. And First Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 9. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want us to write this central truth down. Central truth, central truth, what we'll be looking at today. Um, those who possesses the gift of faith believe God in such a way that he honors their word as his own. And he miraculously brings it to pass. I'll say that again. Thank you, Thank you so much. I'll, I'll say that again. Central truth. Those who possesses the gift of faith. So we're looking first of all this evening out of the three. Sorry, just give me. I'm going to read it again. Out of the three power gift, we'll be looking first 
at the gift of faith. Amen. So I've given us the Bible text. Now the central truth. Those who possess the gift of faith believe God in such a way that he honors their word as his own. And he miraculously brings it to pass. Amen. Did we get that? Yeah. If you don't mind just reading it again, okay. uh, just to get clarity as I'm writing, if you don't mind, please, sir. Central truth. Those who possess the gift of faith believe God in such a way that he honors their word as his own and he miraculously brings it to pass. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Are we, are we there? So we've got um, having covered the three revelation gifts, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirit in previous lesson. We will go now to the three power gifts. Three power gifts. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, the power gift, those that do something, they do something. We talked about who and um, the the gift of you divided them into three different groups. We said there is one that reveals something. The other three, they do something. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're looking at the three power gifts that do something. Hallelujah. And um, those three gifts that do something are the gift of faith, the working of miracles, and the gift of healings. Amen. And the first one we'll be looking at today is the gift of faith, or we call it special faith. The gift of faith, or it is called special faith. So if I say special faith, I almost also mean the gift of faith. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's the gift of special faith, or the, it's the gift of faith, sorry, or special faith. And then um, we'll be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 12, please. Can we read it? You must got Sister Helen, your favorite. Let's read again. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Where are we? Sorry, Pastor Gabriel, 1 Corinthians. Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4. To 12. Right. First Corinthians chapter 12, <laughs> verses 4 to 12, reading from the Amplified. Now mm. there are distinctive variety of spiritual gifts, special yeah. abilities given by the grace and extraordinary power of the Holy Spirit operating in believers. Mm. But it is the same spirit who grants mm. them and empowers believers. Amen. And there are in and there are distinctive varieties of ministries and service, but it is the same Lord who is served. And Amen. there are distinctive ways of working to accomplish things, but it is the same God who produces all these things in all believers, inspiring, Amen. energizing, and empowering them. Amen. But each one is given the manifestation of the spirit, the spiritual illumination, and the enabling of the Holy Spirit for the common good. Amen. The one is given through the Holy Spirit, the power to speak, the message of wisdom, and to another, the power to express the word of knowledge and understanding according to the same spirit. To Amen. another, wonder working faith is given by the same Holy Spirit. And to another, the extraordinary gifts of healing by the one spirit mm. and to another,
the working of miracles and to another prophecy for telling the future, speaking a new message from God to the people and to another discernment of spirit, the ability to distinguish sound godly doctrine from deceptive doctrine of man-made religions and cults to another various kinds of unknown tongues and to another interpretation of tongues. All these things, the gifts, the achievements, the abilities, the empowering are brought about by one and the same Holy Spirit, distributing to each one individually just as he chooses. Verse 12, for just as the body is one and yet has many parts and all the parts, though many, form only one body, so it is with Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that reading. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for reading. Um, hallelujah. First of all, we have to know that um, like um, um, the gift of faith, like all other gifts of the spirit, they are all supernatural. Amen. So let us all, we have to recognize that this gift yeah, all supernatural gifts. They are not some. They're not some. Some of them are not natural gifts. Some people think that some of them are natural gifts, and some of them are supernatural. But all of them, if one is supernatural, the whole of the gift is supernatural. Hallelujah! So you can't have some natural and some supernatural. The Bible called them. They're the gifts of the spirit. Hallelujah. Um, they're the things of the spirit. They're not natural things. They have to be impacted by the Holy Spirit as he wills. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Sorry. In chapter 12. Just get, bear me a minute. I'm just going back to that. Um, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we look at that. Just want to also look at him. He says, so, so the, all this gift, they are all supernatural gift. It's not natural. So there are those who say that some of the gifts of the spirit are natural and some are supernatural. However, if one is supernatural, then all are supernatural. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have to understand that, that if one of the gifts is supernatural, the whole of the gift is supernatural. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I just want to emphasize also on that verse of scripture that talks about um, um, the verses 12 of that scripture that was read now. It says, for as the body is one and has many members, and, uh, and all the, the members and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also his, is Christ. Hallelujah. Then verses 11 says, but all these walketh that one and the same spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. So the gifts were not meant to be selected by individuals or personally solicited by them, but were instead given by the spirit, amen? So it's not, someone say, oh yes, okay, you know what? I'm gonna just take the word of wisdom. I wanna operate in that. Or I'm gonna take the gift of faith. That is what I want to operate on. You know, it's not like that. It's not based on individual what you want or how you want it to work in you. No, it says the gift were not meant to be selected by individuals or personally solicited by them, but were instead given by the spirit as he determined. So the spirit is referred to six times in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 7 to 11. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And also the next verse, I want to look at the next verse as well. 
The next verse says that, but all this worketh that one and the same self spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. Amen. So we see verses, sorry, verses 12. It says, For as the body is one, as the body is one, we know, look at this, look at our body. We have the head, we have the arms, we have the we have the nose, the eyes, every part of the body. It says, as the body is one, and as many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So also is Christ. We know we are the body of Christ, and Christ is the head. And the Bible is saying, just, just as the body with all its members are one, so is Christ with his body. Amen? So we are one with Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So the human body is a unit. We have to understand that the human body is a unit. The body of Christ as well is a unit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And on the unit of the body of Christ, the human body has many parts with a necessary diversity in its members. The part of the human body work together as one with a dependent mutuality as each part fulfills an important function. So likewise, the body of Christ has a diversity of parts functioning together. You see, the reason why the Holy Spirit distributes this gift is because we have the gift are meant for us to use it to profit everybody, but different people operating in different gifts. Hallelujah. We are supposed to be, it's supposed to be, um, the gifts should be operation in the body of Christ for the profit of all not the profit of an individual, profit of all as a body. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so as I said earlier, on, there are those who think that the gift is, some of them are natural, some of them are, uh, are supernatural. And every gift, they are all supernatural manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And we can see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 11 says, but all these work at that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. So it's a distribution by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it is supernatural, amen? So the gift of faith is the greatest of the three gift of power, amen? The gift of faith is the greatest out of the three powerful gifts. Hallelujah. And the three powerful power gift is the gift of faith, the working of miracles, and the gift of healing. So what are the three power gifts, anybody? The gift of faith, the working of miracles, and the gift of healing. And the gift of healing. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So it is the gift of the spirit to the believer so that he might receive miracles. Amen. So I say that again, the gift of faith. It is a gift of the spirit to the believer so that he might receive miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. The working of miracle, on the other hand, is the gift, is a, is, is a gift of the spirit given to believer so that he might walk miracles. One receives miracles and one walks miracles. Amen. You see, they are two, 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 they are the same. 
the same power gift, gift of um, the working of miracles and also the gift of faith. So the gift of faith receives miracles. The gift of working of miracles is the gift of the spirit given to believers so that he might work miracles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We see many people that walk miracles, many evangelists that walk miracles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Smith Wigglesworth walked miracles. Hallelujah. I don't know if we heard about Smith Wigglesworth. Hallelujah. In the Bible, um, sorry, um, he, he lives in Bradford. He came in, in this country. He walked miracles. Hallelujah. Not everybody has the gift of walking miracles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Not everybody has the gift of receiving miracles. I know what I'm talking about when I say receiving miracles. This is miracles that, um, um, extraordinary miracles that you never heard of. Catherine Coleman. For example, um, you see, um, let me give you an example of somebody that received that miracle. And the woman with the issue of blood, she was, she had problems for 12 years. Amen. And everybody that was touching Jesus, nothing, the Bible never talked about them, not something happening to them. But this specific woman, there were many people touching her. She touched Jesus. Jesus says, who touched me? The disciple thought, hang on a minute. Master, what's up with you? Is something wrong with you? We've got lots of people touching you and you're asking who touched me. He says, but well, somebody touched me. Because the Bible says when she touched Jesus, virtue came out of him. Amen. And she received her miracle. Amen. So that is the gift of faith at work. Amen. Special miracle. It's not just any kind of miracle, a special miracle. Hallelujah. So she was able to receive special miracle, special miracle. It was, she said, the Bible says, and she said, if I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Amen. And she touched him. And Jesus turned back and said, somebody has touched me because virtue came out of him. Hallelujah. And she received a healing. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's, that's an example of a special miracle. We do receive miracles. But in this woman's case, she was going through a lot for so many years and she needed a miracle to be made whole. And she received the miracle through the gift of faith. Hallelujah. She had a special kind of faith. It's a special kind of faith that has to be impacted by the Holy Spirit for you to be able to receive supernatural, your special, and um, to, receive, to receive miracles, like special kind of miracles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So one gift receives and the other gift does something. One gift is passive. That means it receives. The other gift is active. Amen. It works. And we need such gift in these last days, amen. In these last days, if we're going to see people, people who are tired of eloquence, people want to see demonstration of spirit, amen. Paul says, when I came to you, I, come, I came not unto you with excellency of speech or enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and of power that your faith, would not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. 
And we can see this in First Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 3. Let's open our Bibles quickly to First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at it. I'm going to read from the New King James, and I'm going to ask somebody to please read it from the Amplified. It says, and my speech. Sorry, Pastor G, just repeat the scripture, please. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 4. It says, and my speech and my preaching was not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and of power. Amen. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. What does the Amplified say, Sister Helen? And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, using clever rhetoric, but they were delivered in demonstration of the Holy Spirit operating through me and of his power, stirring the minds of the listeners and persuading them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verses five. Verse five. And so that your faith would not just rest on the wisdom and rhetoric of men, but on the power of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, this is why, you know, every one of us, I believe we are ministers of God in one way or the other. You know, you know, whenever we're ministering to people, we have to make sure we have to be praying. These are scriptures we need to take as our prayer points, put them as our prayer points and pray them, personalize them. Lord, my speech and my preaching will not be with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and of power, that the faith of the people will not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God in Jesus' name. And you spend time praying in the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you can take, take a fast. Take a fast and pray this prayer all throughout your fasting period. You're consistently praying. You will notice that whenever you now preach the word of God, people will be persuaded to live according to that word. You won't have to force them. You won't have to wind people up. You won't have to stir them up to be able to live for God. You will have to start preaching. Hey, you have to be holy. You have to abstain from sex. No, the moment you open your mouth, they just get convicted. Look at the, the disciples. The Bible says when they preach on after they will receive the Holy Spirit, the people says, what shall we do that we may receive salvation? They were asking. They didn't need to persuade them. Amen. And that's what the work of the Holy Spirit, when we, when we give the Holy Spirit time, when we, are, when we give ourselves to the Holy Spirit through prayer, through meditation of the word of God, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us. He says, preaching, well, he says that his preaching was not with persuasive words of human wisdom. Some people try to use human wisdom to cajole people to be, to be able to, be, to, 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 be, to, 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 to live for God. But we don't need to cajole people because the word of God, let me tell you something about the word of God. The word of God is that powerful and anointed enough to change people's life. So as long as, if the person remains in the word, the person will definitely change. But two, two, two things will have to happen. He has to remain in the word to change or he might just abandon the word and remain the same. But if he remains in the word, the word of God will change it. Amen. That's how powerful the word of God it says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Christ. But hey, that's another day. That's another different preaching entirely when we begin to talk about the power of the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, 
So as we said here, he says to another, he says, I'm sorry, so he says, the gift, one gift receives and the other gift does something. So one gift is passive, it receives, the other gift is active, it works. Notice that the scripture says to another, the working of miracles. So when you perform a miracle, that's working a miracle. But when you receive a miracle, you don't work it and that's, uh, you don't work it. And that's the gift of faith in operation. That's what happened with the lady with the issue of blood. She received the miracle, amen, hallelujah. And we must remember too that the power gifts are very closely associated, amen just as the revelation gifts are closely associated. So, and uh, the, the, sorry, the revelation gifts are closely associated. And all trans gift, prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, which we'll be talking about later, and interpretation of tongues are closely associated. All these three gifts, they kind of operate, they, also, uh, they kind of operate um, together, amen? For example, Jesus was the one that walked miracles. Amen. The woman received miracles. Hallelujah. So they kind of walk hand in hand. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So they are closely associated. So in fact, the Bible plainly tells us in 1 Corinthians 14, 5, if we look at 1 Corinthians 14, 5, um, um, I just want to show us, I know um, people have been asking about prophecy and stuff like that, you know, but hey, I've just been trying to avoid it because I don't want to go into it early before we get to it. Amen. So he says here in verses five of First Corinthians, he says, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied for he who prophesied is greater than he who speaks with tongues unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. So basically he's saying that prophecy, the gift of prophecy and the gift of tongues, they operate together in the sense that when you pray, when you speak in tongues and there is an interpretation, then we have a prophecy come through that, amen? So they all work together. Um, the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. Amen? So all those gifts, they intermingle together. They all work together. Hallelujah. So I'm talking about the gift. I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the gift of tongues here. That, the, that is the one that says, says something. Amen? So we have the gift that reveals something. We hear that do something. And the one that says something. Hallelujah. But we'll be talking about the gift that says something. Amen. Diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. We'll be talking about it later. But I'm just letting you know that this, all these different kinds of gifts, they all work together. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we differentiate between these gifts and list them separately in order to better define them. Furthermore, we also find that faith like prayer is often confused in some people's mind. We have types of prayers, isn't it? Amen. We talked about the different kind of prayers. So we have tendency to put all kinds of faith. It's possible. Sometimes we always put all the different kind of faith. We put them all together, mix them all together. And we want to actually put them in one box and make them work together. But actually they are different kinds of faith which we'll be talking about because there's no how we're going to talk about the gift of faith or special kind of faith without talking about the different kinds of faith. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have tendency to put all kinds of faith in the same sack, mix them up, shake them all out together, but we must differentiate between them. Those, we learn that there are four different kinds of faith. So I want to talk about the four different kinds of faith so that we will know the difference between the gift of faith and the other kind of faith. Amen. 
So I'm going to talk about four different kinds of faith. And the first faith I will be talking about today is the saving faith. Saving faith. Saving faith. Saving faith. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The second kind of faith is the general faith. The third kind of faith is the fruit, fruit of faith. And the last one is the gift of faith of which we're talking about. So it's important we have to know the different kinds of faith so that when we are acting on them, we know the kind of faith that we are acting on. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As someone said, he says, the best way to find out something about something is to find out what that thing is not. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. So what the saving kind of faith, we see the saving kind of faith in Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8. Let's open our Bible to Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8. Hallelujah. It says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. Amen. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And you see that? Amen. It says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Hallelujah. So the faith by which we are saved is a gift of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The faith that we have been saved, it's a gift from God. It's a gift that God gives to us. On that day when we heard the message of salvation, amen, and you said, yes, Lord, hallelujah. He impacts that gift, the gift of faith, to be able to trust him to save you. Amen? And you acted on that. Amen? So he says, the faith by which we are saved is the gift of God. It is impacted to us through the word of God. When we heard the word of God of salvation, hallelujah, it was impacted. The Bible says faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we heard the word, immediately our, 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 our spirit leaped within us and said, yes, this is for me. I believe it. Amen. So then faith, saving faith comes by hearing, Romans chapter 10, verses 17, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. However, the kind of faith which we will be discussing in this lesson, that is the gift of faith or special faith, is different from saving faith. It's totally different from saving faith. Amen? Hallelujah. So we have to understand that it's different. This is not your, the saving kind of faith. We're all saved. Amen? Hallelujah. Through the word of God, we believe it. We, the Bible says, if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and confess and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we're going to look at the general faith. General faith. General faith. And we find this in Romans chapter 12 and verses 3. Hallelujah. Brother James, please, can you read for us? Robert, sorry, Dick and James. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. Um, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Yes, sir. It says, for I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. So God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Amen. God has dealt unto us a measure of faith. Amen. So this is a type of faith. It's called the general faith, which all believers have. Every believer has this kind of faith. Amen. Everyone, God has dealt unto each one of us. There is measure of faith. Hallelujah. So the general faith can be increased. This general faith can be increased. You can increase on it. The more you feed on the word of God, the more you increase the measure of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. So general faith can be increased as Christians feed on the word of God and exercise it in the arena of life. So you've got to exercise this kind of faith on your daily, or daily to be able to um, develop this kind of faith. If you don't put it to work, then... You know, you can't develop it. You listen to the word, you apply the word of God to your life, and you, 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 it develops this faith. Hallelujah. In the arena of life, uh, through life's experience, through life's, and uh, we go through challenges and trials, we've got to apply this faith. Hallelujah. We increase it by feeding on the word, and we apply it in the arena of life. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, 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 amen. I, 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 am I making sense here? Am I making sense? Am I making sense? Praise God, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we can all have this ever-increasing general faith. We can all have this ever-increasing general kind of faith. You can have a faith. First of all, you can have a faith for two people to be saved. You can have a faith for a thousand souls. You can have a faith for a million souls. You can just, you can, you can begin to develop it as you apply it. As you begin to pray, you apply it, you apply it. Once you see it work for two people, then you see it work for another people. Then you say, oh, let me stretch it a little bit more. And you stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch. It's an ever-increasing kind of faith. It doesn't have an end. It depends on you how far you want to go, how far you want to go. If you want, how far you want to dwell in the word, get in the word. This is why get in the word. This is, you know, if you want your faith to expand, get in the word. Hallelujah. Get in the word. If the word is the, is the key here. Amen. Spend time in the word. And don't look at it like, oh, do you know, sometimes when you're reading the Old Testament and you go to, you know, some, you get to some places in the scripture like, and this one begat that one, and that one begat this one, and this one begat that, and begat that, and begat that. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> you're closing. <laughs> No, let me tell you something. Those things are good. Keep reading them. Keep reading them. And you begin to find out that when you need them, those little, little things that you think they are irrelevant, they are relevant. You know, last night, I was, last time I was looking, reading um, about Abraham and his, um, how they all married each other in the, in the family. And is looking at... Um, First of all, Abraham had a brother called Neho. Um, Neho is that's his, Abraham's direct brother. Then Neho gave back to a son, um, a son called Bethel. And um, Bethel was the one that gave back to Laban and Rebekah. Laban and Rebekah, they are brothers and sisters. So um, I say they are. Um, Abraham's nieces and nephew, amen? And Abraham sends his servant. He says, hey, 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 please, don't go anywhere. I want you to send, I want you to go to my nieces and nephews. I mean, I want you to go to my brother's house and find a wife from my nieces and nephew. Amen? So, Basically, Abraham, Isaac, sorry, Isaac got married. 
he got married to his, um, his father's brother's son's children, I mean daughter, sorry. So he got married to his grandniece. So I began to find out all this. I was like, oh, okay, yes. You know, so I'm no, no more confused because sometimes, and the Bible says Laban um, and um, Bethel is a Syrian. I'm thinking Syrian, how can he be a Syrian? And Abraham is, you know, the father of the Jewish nation, amen? I'm looking at that. But actually Abraham's background came right from the Syrian before God called him and separated him out. So I was able to know that actually he was, he was, um, he began as a Gentile and God called him, separated him out and brought and, 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 and through his loins, the Jewish nation came out of him. Amen. So all these things, they are quite important for us to know that actually God has a plan even for those that are non-Jewish nation. Amen. So you see how the Gentiles come into place, why Jesus Christ not, did not just die for only the Jews. He died for the sin of the whole world. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're kind of connected. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. So it's better to know all these kind of things so that, you know, when we, when, when, when even the Jewish people are saying they don't want to have anything to do with the Gentiles, and um, they're saying that because if they know the roots from where they began, they would see the love of God even for them. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's important for us to, all these little, little things, they are important, the word of God, when we look at it. So we can, we can pray, where we can look at the, even the Muslim nations and pray for them. I found out that Ishmael, actually, his children are the 12 princes of the, of the um, what do you call it, the, the Arabian Peninsula, which is the UAE. You know, all the princes on that area, and Dubai, Saudi Arabia, all those are all Ishmael. These are all Ishmaelites. Amen. They are the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. That we need to pray for too, to come to Christ Jesus. Because God said he will bless him too. But we are in Christ so that we can reach out to them too. We can pray for them to come to Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So all this little things, little, little, don't look at it that you're, it's, it's all a waste of time. They are there to expand your knowledge of the word of God and so that you can see through God's picture and pray for people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sorry for that. I kind of digressed a little bit. Amen. So the general kind of faith. So um, the general kind of faith is, um, it says the general faith can be increased as Christians feed on the word of God and exercise it in the arena of life. So we can all have this ever increasing general faith. So the gift of faith, however, is one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen giving us the Holy Spirit wills. So the gift of faith is different from the general kind of faith. The gift of faith is given by the Holy Spirit as he wills. But the general faith, every child of God has got it. Like it says in Romans 12 verses three, it says he's dealt unto us the, the measure of faith. Yes. I think somebody's raising their hands questions, yes. Go ahead. Hello, Vicky. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was waiting. I didn't know if it was me you were talking about or not. Good. Um, so how what's the difference? What what's the difference between having just general level of faith or having the gift of faith? What would that look like? Okay. Like I said, general kind of faith is something that we have all been given. God has dealt unto us the measure of faith. We looked at it in Romans chapter 12 and verses 3. The, the special kind of faith or the gift of faith is given as the spirit wills. And um, I give an example of the woman with the issue of blood. Um, because the special kind of faith or the gift of faith receives, it doesn't do anything, but receives a special kind of miracle. It is the working of miracle that actually does something. It does 
um, performs miracle and also is given by the will of God. So the woman with the issue of God, Jesus by blood, Jesus was walking among many crowds, many crowds was touching him. And all of a sudden, this woman touches Jesus and Jesus says, style stands and says, hang on a minute, who touched me? But you has left me. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, she said, if I can touch the hem of the God, that's a kind, that's a special kind of faith. She had been in that case for 12 years. For her to be able to say, you know, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And she was made whole immediately. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know whether I've been able to answer your question. No, I'm still confused, but I will um talk okay. about it later. Ask me, ask me again what's the question is, sorry. So what it would look like in our day-to-day -day lives, like I get that the woman with the issue of blood had, you know, an amazing level of faith to believe that she'd be healed. Yeah. But for us, what does that look like in this day and age? And yeah, I just, I'm confused. Um, special kind of faith as well. If you look at, um, in some situation, you have quite a lot of people, they attend a meeting. Sometimes some of them might actually go with a wheelchair and um, maybe 10 people might go in there with a wheelchair. And why is it that maybe a couple of them get healed? You know, and the rest are not healed, but it's the same spirit that is in that environment, ready to heal them. So some people have a special kind of faith, you know, uh, a special kind of faith in the, name, in the sense that, um, um, you know, they are able to receive their miracles. Hallelujah. They are able to receive their miracles. Because or some people, um, look at them, for example, uh, um, some people might have a growing limp. They had a short limp and all of a sudden their limp is grown straight away. That's a miracle. They were born with a kind of um, they were born with uh, uh, one leg shorter than the other. And all of a sudden they receive a special miracle and all of a sudden their legs are normal again. They are walking. Is, is that a kind of faith that happens in the moment or is that something that they have all the time? No, it's given by the spirit. Like I said, if, if we look at it, it says- so We have no control over it at all. No. It's a Holy Spirit thing. Is, yes, by the Holy Spirit. This is given by the Holy Spirit at the will of the Holy Spirit. The only, the only reason I'm asking that is because, you know, you hear a lot of people when um, like people don't get healed at meetings and mm. they're like, oh, it was because of your lack of faith. Mm. That's why you didn't get healed. That's why you didn't get your healing. Mm. So that's kind of. It's, 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 it's available. It's available um, to everybody. But surely if the Holy Spirit hadn't given those other eight people in the wheelchair a special kind of faith in that moment, then it's not. Yeah, but the thing it's is that the spirit wills. It's not down to us, is it? It's the reason sometimes could be as a result of something. Maybe there might be, and there might be an issue that the Holy Spirit is trying to show them in their lives mm. that they haven't dealt with, and that might be the hindrance to such miracles. But if, like I said, it's as the spirit wills. Mm. I don't have control over it. Nobody has control over it, but it's as the spirit will. It's a special kind of faith. You understand? So I, 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 I don't have a, I don't have control over it. Nobody has control over it. Just like all the, all the other gifts. You can't turn it on and off. Amen. We've talked about saving faith. Um, I think, brother, um, what's his name? But, um, what, um, brother, um, sorry, um, Brother Thomas is trying to talk about the general faith. We've talked about saving faith. We're talking about general faith now. And it's different from the saving faith. The saving faith is by grace we have been saved through faith. The general faith is the one that we have, every believer has um, that can be increased as we study the word of God that can be increased as we feed on the word of God. We're able to trust God for bigger stuff as we grow in the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So 
Yeah, that's a, that's a special kind of faith that we're talking about. You know, some people you'll see them in the meeting and um, I'll give an example. There was, um, there was um, a man that um, went for this miracle. His wife came, she pushed him to the, she brought him to the church. This miracle crusade to be, to be healed. He was on a wheelchair and um, you know, he was just really, really horrible to his wife, even while she was brought forward to be healed. And the man of God noticed that. He's like, excuse me, sir, is this, who is this woman to you? And he says, this is his wife. And you're acting like this and you're coming before the Lord to be healed. And the Holy Spirit just said, you know, all he needed to do was to sort his issue out with his wife for him to be healed. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you see that? So there might be some things in the heart of the first individual. Yes, they're Christian. I might stop the flow of the healing. So even though the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is at work, Sometimes it could be, there could be a block to that in the life of the individual for them to receive such special kind of faith to be healed. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And Brother James. Amen and amen. Uh, uh, yeah, my question was, um, what about when you have faith for somebody else? So for example, uh, you know, the Roman uh, centurion, he had faith for his servant to get uh, healed. Uh, what kind of faith is this? Okay. That, 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 that kind of faith, we can have it. Um, it, it could be a general kind of faith too, actually, because um, he's, he, he, he said what he, if you listen to what he said, he says, I am a man of authority. Um, I say to my servant, go, and he goes. And he comes and he comes. He says, well, you speak the word, and I believe that my servant will be made whole. You understand? And that's a general kind of faith based on hearing about Jesus. He heard about Jesus. Amen. He heard about Jesus. That was why he was able to have faith. And he say, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Jesus is the word of God became flesh. With all the miracles that has happened in around, he heard that. Then he was able to approach Jesus based on the message he heard about Jesus. And he was able to have faith for his servant based on that. Mm. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that, is that, is that um thank you um, bishop oh you just answered my question so that's fine now this is <laughs> yeah you just answered <laughs> awesome 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 praise the lord jesus christ amen hallelujah so so we says however um, the gift of faith, however, is one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, given as the Holy Spirit wills. Furthermore, general faith is faith by which we ordinarily receive answers to prayer. General faith. We ordinarily receive answers to prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. For example, we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by faith. Amen. And we receive answers to prayer by faith. Because Jesus says, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, if we don't have this general kind of faith, there's no way we'll be able to believe or trust God for anything. Amen. Hallelujah. So many of us receive answers to prayer by faith, general faith, even before we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So the answers comes because we believe God by faith, 
but that is not the same as the gift of faith in operation. Amen. In fact, if the gift of faith had to be in operation in order to get answers to prayer, to receive healing for the body, or to have a financial need meant, then we could never get any answers, any answered until after we have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because that's when this kind of faith, the gift of special faith is received. But even then, it is only as the Spirit wills. So this kind of faith is also in operation after we've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when we've been filled with the Holy Spirit. That's when this kind of faith is more in operation. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, and the following, and following this same line of reasoning, it is um, if it required the gift of faith, special faith to receive answer to prayer, then not everyone, even those filled with the spirit could be assured of having their prayers answered. Why? Because not every spirit filled believer is promised this gift of special faith. Amen. Not every spirit-filled believer is promised this special faith. We know that it says that in 1 Corinthians 12, 8, if you look at it, it says, for to one is giving, amen, the word of knowledge. To another, faith by the same spirit, amen. So regarding this gift of faith, Paul sums up that the end of the, um, uh, sums up at the end of the chapter that, uh, so, sums up at the end of the chapter, are all workers of miracles? No. Let's go back to it. Let's look at it. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verses Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It says, are all apostles, are all prophets, and a lot of people have looked at these scriptures and they've thought that Jesus was, I mean, he was talking more about the ministerial gift. But this is how we know that he wasn't talking about ministerial gift. He's talking about spiritual gift because if you look at because there are certain gifts that the apostle walks in there are certain gifts spiritual gifts that the prophets walks in and there are certain spiritual gifts that the teachers walks in amen and you will see says are all apostles are all prophets are all teachers are all workers of miracles. Now it brings it back to the gifts that we're talking about. You see that now, amen? Are all workers of miracles. Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? This is talking about the gift here. It's not talking, you see people, this is why people, they misquote this one. They say, because it says that do all, do all speak with tongues, they are looking at it as not everybody will speak in tongues. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about these special gifts. Amen. So it's important for us to know. This is how we, you know, a lot of people have come up with these scriptures and they said not everybody is going to pray in tongues or will be able to speak in tongues. And therefore, you know, I don't really need to speak in tongues. No, that's not what he's talking. He's talking here about the gift of the spirit that 
the Lord gives, um, uh, 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 he gives at will. He's talking about when this spirit, this gift is in operation, which is the speaking of tongues and the interpretation of tongues, is talking about the gift here when it is in operation, hallelujah. So it says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, do all have gift of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret? It says, but earnestly desire the best gift. How can you be talking about one minute, he's talking about prophet, apostles, teachers, workers of miracles, gift of healing, tongues, and interpret. then he ends it, he says, but earnestly desire the best gift. So we know he's talking about gift here. It's not talking about ministerial gift. It's talking about gifts and the gift of the spirit in its operation. Hallelujah. So it's important for us when we're reading the scripture, we read in context. When we read in context, then we're able to have the right application. If you read it in the wrong context, you have the wrong application. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. It says, but earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet I show you more, a more excellent way. Hallelujah. And if we look at um, 13, it shows us in a more excellent way of how to do it. It says, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have no love. I have become a sounding brass or a clinging symbol. Though I have the gift of prophecy. You see now he's continue, he's, he's continue, he's talking. You will notice he's emphasizing on gift. That's all he's been talking about there. It's not whether you receive, um, you, you can pray, um, uh, whether people pray in tongues or not. No, he's talking about the gift. Hallelujah. In its operation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if the Bible says we should pray without ceasing and that and building up yourself in your most holy faith by praying in tongues, then every believer has to pray in tongues. Hallelujah. But when it comes to the gift of tongues and interpretation, it is how the spirit wills. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The best way we can, it shows us the best, an excellent way of doing this is by walking in love. When we walk in love, the Holy Spirit is able to use us in operating in this gift as he wills. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus. I don't know. Any question? Any question? Or any, um, anything you want to add to it, if you want to add something to it, Bishop, anything you want to add to it, sir, or anybody wants to add to it, you know, please, the room is open. Please. Good teaching, Pastor Gabriel. Good explanations. Good answering to the questions. We are blessed. I am blessed. Anybody else? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. If you're not sure you want Pastor Gable to explain again, please feel free. Don't be afraid. We are family. All right. You're not going to be embarrassed. <laughs> well, if you want... Yes, Gary. What was the difference, again, the distinction between general faith and other faith? Okay. Because okay. I'm trying to sort of think it in the fact that you said that all believers have faith. So does that mean if all believers have faith, God might not grant their prayer, but he'll grant your prayer if you've got an increased faith. Does that make sense? Or, you know, okay. If you've got a better faith than one faith, God may grant your prayer in this side of it, but not this side of it. Isn't faith, faith? You see what okay. I mean? Yeah. Okay. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. I'll be back in a minute, please. Just give me a minute. I'll be back. Well, God has given each and every one a measure of faith. Faith that God has given and placed with inside of every believer. That's a surety. It's by faith that you are safe because you believe that God will save and change your life. So automatically it was that general faith that saved your life. You understand? That's the faith that God has placed in you. Your faith needs to grow by man of God said it by reading the word, understanding the word, growing in the word, and even like today. 
it's that kind of a, as we continue, I don't jump the gun. Uh, I still believe that every believer has general faith. You sitting on faith now on your chair. That's general faith. You believe the chair will hold you. That's general faith. You believe that when you throw water in a cup, the cup is not going to break. You have that general faith. The kettle is going to work when you put water in. That is also faith. You understand? You get into your car, you know your car is going to start because you have the faith into a practical thing. Right, Pastor G? I just elaborated a little bit. You continue, sir. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I want you to understand that um, we talked about faith. You can't mix all the different kind of faith and make it as one and call it faith. And won't, because you have to know the different kind of faith. Like I said earlier on, we have the saving faith. The saving faith, that saving faith that we have. First of all, you never heard about the gospel. Then you heard about the gospel, yeah? And when you heard it, you had the saving faith to believe it that actually when I come to Jesus, he will save me, amen? That's the saving faith. But the general kind of faith that is the one God has dealt unto us, which we have to grow in every day. First of all, because we don't have, um, every day we grow in the knowledge of God. So as we grow in the knowledge of God, we're able to, and faith is stirred in our spirit to believe God even more for certain things because there are things we didn't know. But as we hear the word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as we hear them, we never had the knowledge of this before we were saved, but now we are saved through the saving faith. Now a general faith has been dealt unto us. Now we begin to have more knowledge of the word of God. Then we're able to believe God and have faith for certain things as we hear about him, just like the centurion. He, he heard about Jesus. I'm pretty sure before you got saved or after you became saved, there are certain things that you couldn't believe God for when you first came to Christ. But as you began to hear the word of God, you're like, oh, I can believe him for this. I can trust him for that. I can trust him for this. I can believe him for that. Amen. Because you begin to discover it from the word of God. Amen. Now, as we begin to study and grow in the knowledge of God, we are beginning to find out that there's another special kind of faith. But this is not within the vicinity of our control. It's by the Holy Spirit. It's the gift of the Spirit that he impacts onto us according to his will. Doesn't mean through general faith we can attain things. We can attain things from God. We can trust him from God. We can trust God for a, a, a lot of things with general faith. But this particular one that we're talking about and we're going to look at examples in the Bible that talks about this special kind of faith. So, yes, we're just kind of in the introduction of it. We're going to get to look at what scripture talks about this kind of special kind of faith. This is just an introduction. And I know um, I've had um, people put it, you know, was trying to explain and say, yes, we're going to get there. We're just still looking at the introduction of it. Amen. So uh, general kind of faith, that's another kind of faith that as we feed on the word of God, we're growing to believe God for more things. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, um, let me just finish this. So we exercise general faith to receive these answers to prayer. So I'm following the same line of um, reasoning. If it requires the gift of faith, special faith to receive answers to prayer, then not everyone, even those filled with the spirit could be assured of having their prayer answered. Why? Because not every spirit filled believer is promised this gift of special faith, amen? The scripture says for one is given, for to one is given the word of knowledge to another faith by the same spirit. So regarding the gift of faith, Paul presume, um, 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 sum, sums up at the end of the chapter, all are workers, um, are all workers of miracles. 
No, have all gift of healing? The answer is no. Then we can add it. Do all have the gift of faith? The answer again is no. So we can see that the gift of faith is not the same as general faith, which every believer has. Every believer has that. Amen. For if we have to rely on the gift of special faith to get our prayer answered, then not everyone could receive answers to prayer. So through general faith, we can have faith for all our prayers to be answered. Amen. So don't think that, hey, I have to have this special kind of faith for my prayer to be answered. No, 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 no. We can use the general faith and our prayer will still be answered. Amen. Hallelujah. But there are certain miracles that it takes the Holy Spirit to be involved in. Amen. And that's a gift. Amen. So we're going to leave that now. Let's go down to the next kind of faith. We're talking about the next kind of faith is the fruit of faith. The fruit of faith. Galatians chapter 5. Just a word. Do you think you want to leave that till next week? Because it's 10 to now. Is it? Yeah. Do you want to maybe leave it for next week? Okay, sir. Because I, I don't do want that. you to touch something and you've got to leave it. It's just a yes. suggestion. It's still up to you, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes. Let's do it that way. Let's leave it. We well, can anybody carry got on more from questions. Mm -hmm. Anybody got more questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any question? Pastor G, you're doing such a good job. Nobody wants to ask. <laughs> huh? You're teaching us so well. I got so much notes here. <laughs> we give God the glory, sir. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? Any, any question? Any question? Any question? Wow. Wow. I must have done a very good job. As always. <laughs> By the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. No question, no question. If no question, then praise the Lord, it is well. Pastor G, it was very plain and simple to understand. Amen. Glory. Yes. Praise, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, 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 amen. So if anybody tells you tomorrow that not all praise in tongues, We've dealt with that issue, that, and they bring that scripture out to you. They say to you, but actually, it was said in First Corinthians chapter twelve, you know, and verses verses twenty nine. It says, you know, they, they they actually bring the scripture out. They say, you know, you know, one thing we have to see is that when whenever anybody brings a scripture to want to, um. They bring a scripture in order to challenge you of certain things. If they don't have at least two to three scriptures to back it up, then you know that they have misinterpreted that one scripture that they are showing to you. So they means that they are they have actually they are interpreting that particular verse out of context, and a text. Out of a context is a pretext. You can never get anything full out of it unless you find out the context at which the apostle was writing about. And you can go back three, four, five verses before that verse in order to get a complete picture of what he's talking about and go even further after that so you can know, have a complete picture of what he's talking about. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. So you see here, it says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? You know, it talks about this. <laughs> it says, are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? So, so people say, do all speak with tongues? They bring that and they say, hey, it means that everybody are not expected to speak in tongues. But you have to say, hey, what is he talking about there? 
Was he talking about just tongues or was he talking about the gift of the spirit? And at which context is it? What are, how does the gift of the spirit, how, how, how do they, or how is it in operation, the gift of the spirit? How is it in operation? The Bible says it's according to the will, to the spirit, how he wills. So now he's talking about the distribution of that gift. Not everyone would operate in the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues. And that doesn't mean that you as a believer cannot operate on it. If the spirit is moving in a certain way and is looking for somebody to use and you're available, it happens. But that has to be by the will of the spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm going to leave it now and I'm going to ask Bishop to pray for us. Oh, Pastor G, that was once again a blessing, a blessing. What a word. Well, I can come on, just, uh, just put thumbs up there on your phone. Just put thumbs up. Wow, what an awesome teaching again. This is what I like about Bible study is digging deep. We should call our Bible study digging deep because we are dig deep because we want to hear what God is saying through his word. And I want to thank God for the man of God, for the anointing upon his life, anointing upon his life. We appreciate you, sir. We appreciate you. We are blessed. As a church Amen. of Jesus Christ, we are blessed because of the word. And may God continue to manifest it more and more. We Amen. know it is there. Continue to stay under covering, under the Amen. covering of the Holy Spirit to direct you. And God is opening doors. Continue to pray for Pastor Amen. Gabriel. Um, he will be doing a teaching in the Philippines on Zoom. I've opened a door for the man of God. Um, it's not about San Fredericks. I want, I believe God is going to use this man mighty and he's already doing so. So next week, Sunday, Pastor Gabriel will be on Zoom in the Philippines teaching about salvation. Amen. You see, they asked me, I said, no, no, there's a pastor that can do that. Thank you, Jesus. So we thank God for the man of God's life. Let us stretch our hands to our screen and let us pray that the Lord will bless the man of God. Father, we thank you for your son that you have used tonight. We thank you for the anointing and enlargement of this anointing upon his life. You have called him for a time such as this to bless the body of Christ. And tonight, Lord, you, we could rent our hearts and write it on the table of our hearts. Now we understand deeper about faith in God. I pray today, God, that you'll keep him well, healthy, blessed, his business, his family, Lord, will be blessed coming in and blessed going on. They will lack nothing, God, because he has emptied himself for your word, now God, fill him with fresh manna, Lord, with fresh oil in the name of Jesus. And we as the students tonight, Lord, we can truly say we were blessed. I pray, Lord God, that we will exercise the faith we have heard tonight, that we'll be better men and women of God to the extension of your kingdom. And so, Father God, continue to be with us while we sleep and when we wake up to give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you, family. Have a good night. Sure. Our friends and family, the Lord bless you. Amen. <laughs> nice seeing you, Pete. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you, everybody.